what's up everyone welcome back once again this should be day four of our kids at book for the week in national parks of the usa and today we will be exploring the rocky mountains as well as the west region of the united states rising more than fourteen thousand feet into the western sky the great rocky mountains stretch clear from canada to mexico this wall of peaks posed quite an obstacle to America's early fur traders, adventurers, and pioneers. Roads now traverse the range, but it's still rugged travel. Hike up steep mountains to see the same animals that were here centuries ago. Packs of wolves, mountain goats, grizzly bears, wolverines, and elk. Explore massive white glaciers, climb up the tallest sand dunes in North America, and listen to the deafening roar of waterfalls. This is a place for adventure, whether it's skiing down slopes or whitewater rafting a rowdy river. In the Rocky Mountains, we will be exploring Great Sand Dunes, Rocky Mountain, Grand Teton, Glacier, Yellowstone, and Black Canyon of the Gunnison. Founded in 1872, Yellowstone was the world's first national park, inspiring thousands like it around the globe. Thanks to hot magma just below the surface of the earth, Yellowstone explodes with more than 10,000 geothermal features. Geysers shoot ultra-hot water hundreds of feet into the air. Fumaroles hiss with steam and mud pots gurgle. This park is also famous for its plentiful wildlife and scenery, like a huge volcanic crater and waterfalls that tumble into canyons. Bison graze in the valleys, elk calve just outside the visitor center at Mammoth Hot Springs, and foxes build dens right along the road. It's not uncommon to see grizzlies crossing the highway and to hear wolves howling at night, just like they did centuries ago. So Yellowstone is in three states. It's in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It was founded in 1872, and its size is 2,221,724 acres. Plants and animals we've got. The first up is the Yellowstone sand verbena. Botanists think this species survives the cold with the help of warm sand from thermal features. Grizzly bears weigh up to 700 pounds and have huge curved claws, but they are mostly vegetarian. Warm Springs Spike Rush. The screen plant grows in mats only in waters around 80 degrees, temperature that would kill most flora or plants. The Sandhill Crane. These four foot tall birds gather in flocks in marshes and grasslands in summer. When mating, they spread their wings, call, and jump in a spectacular dance. Native Americans used this long straight pine to make their lodges and teepees. With shallow roots, lodge poles can keel over in windstorms. As many as 20,000 elk roam Yellowstone. During the fall mating season, listen for bulging, a long moan, and series of impressive screams. Lynx are wild cats with tufted ears are so secretive they've only been spotted 112 times in the history of the park. Do you think you could find one? The only true aquatic songbird in the country, the dipper, has a gland that produces special oil to keep its feathers water resistant. It spends its time dipping and diving in water for insects. Yellowstone River and Yellowstone Lake have the world's largest population of inland cutthroat trout, tasty fish that feed bears, otters, mink, and about 20 species of birds. The hot magma under Yellowstone heats up underground water, which then bubbles to the surface, forming hot springs. Many turn crazy colors like Grand Prismatic Spring. It's not the water that's colored, though it's tiny bacteria known as thermophiles, which can withstand some of the hottest, most acidic waters on earth. Yellowstone has more geysers than any other place on the planet. 
Old Faithful is the most famous, erupting in a spectacular 130-foot-tall fountain every 60 to 110 minutes. But there are lots of others in fanciful forms and shapes. Some geysers sprout and burst and others in fireworks. Some shoot up every few hours, while others only appear every few decades. One, named Steamboat, rockets up to 400 feet in the air, but its eruptions are totally unpredictable. Fire is a natural and important part of Yellowstone. Every summer, lightning starts dozens of fires, most of which peter out after torching less than half an acre. After a fire sweeps through, dead and decaying vegetation is broken down and the soil is enriched by minerals from the ash and sunlight. Around charred trees, a bright carpet of greenery emerges, creating new homes for birds, insects, and other animals. Glaciers look like massive stationary blocks of ice, but they're actually rivers of frozen water that flow down mountains like conveyor belts. As they move, they grind the landscape into the jagged scenery that you see today, like for signs of them, such as Aridity's steep saw-like fins carved by two glaciers rubbing a mountain, skid down moraines, or dip your toes into 40-degree turquoise lakes fed by snowmelt. This national park is also known for having all the same animals that were here when the land was the sole territory of indigenous people. Bears, wolves, wolverines, bald eagles, and marmots, to name just a few. To see the park's small citizens, venture into a stream and turn over a rock to see the creepy crawlies that thrive in the clean mountain water. So Glacier is located in Montana. It was founded in 1910 and its size is 1,013,379 acres. Some plants and animals that we've got living here are Pitarmigan. These ground dwelling birds survive the cold with the help of nostril feathers that warm the air they breathe. Their feathered feet act like snowshoes. Glacier lilies sprout with six spectacular yellow petals just after the snow melts. Some Native American tribes used to dig up the bulbs for food. Wolverines, this scrappy, ferocious predator, weighs only 20 to 30 pounds, but can take down animals as big as elk and chew its way out of traps. The white bark pine can withstand high winds, terrible cold, and poor soil, which is why you'll see it high on mountains where no other trees would dare grow. The army cutworm moths grow up on the Great Plains, then fly to the mountains in summer and hide in rock fields. Grizzly bears turn over rocks and eat thousands of them each day. Harlequin ducks like rough water so much that many adults have broken bones from the turbulence. Look for them swimming in rushing rivers and near rapids and waterfalls. Mountain goats survive 100 mile per hour winds and temperatures as low as negative 50 degrees with the help of their thick, two-layered wool coats. Huckleberry, or black and brown, black and brown bears, love these purplish blue berries. They're a delicious snack for us too. A pika is so small it could fit in the palm of your hand. One of the only animals that can survive winter above the tree line, these mammals hide out in tallest slopes and don't hibernate. Among the many cool features left behind by the glaciers, Paternoster Lakes form after the hulking ice digs out a string of little bowls on its way down the mountain. They're often linked by a stream and look like the beads on a rosary, which is why they're named Paternoster, after the Lord's Prayer. On top of the Continental Divide, a drop of water can go west and eventually end up in the Pacific Ocean or east to the Atlantic. From the top of Triple Divide Peak, that drop could split in three ways and end up in vastly different places, the Atlantic, Pacific, or the Hudson Bay, way up north in Canada. Only two other peaks in the world boast a rare triple drainage system such as this. Glaciers form when winter snowfall outpaces summer melting.
Because of the climate change, the glaciers in the National Park are receding and scientists predict they will disappear by 2030. But their marks will remain across the landscape. Look for U-shaped valleys with flat bottoms and steep sides, mountains shaped like horns, and cirques, which are valleys that look like ice cream scoops. Alrighty, so at this time, if you guys want to go ahead, take a little stretch break, and when you come back, we will explore the West. Alrighty, everyone, welcome back from your little break. We will now be exploring the West part of the United States and all of the wonders it has to offer. Feel small as an ant as you explore the majestic open spaces or walk beneath the towering trees, mountains, and volcanoes of the American West, where the National Park idea was born. In the Sierra Nevada, giant hunks of granite shoot up into the sky and canyons plunge into the earth. In groves of the world's biggest and tallest trees, sunbeams filter down through the canopies as they would in a beautiful temple. Volcanoes tower over the land, some still steaming, and no one knows exactly when they'll erupt again. While the parks are full of big league splendor, they also have tiny charms too. Be still and quiet as they hawk to spot shy wildlife from trout to bobcats. Listen to the sounds of nature from bees buzzing in the high mountains, meadows to wind rushing over bare pinnacles to waves crashing on magnificent Pacific shores. Some places we're going to explore in the West are Olympic Redwoods, Pinnacles, Channel Islands, and we've got the North Cascades, Mount Rainier, Crater Lake, Laysan and Volcanic, Yasmite, and Sequoia and Kings Canyon. Lie down in a grassy meadow in Yasmite Valley and look up. Solid granite rocks rise more than a half mile into the sky, and waterfalls thunder down their faces for thousands of feet. If you get close, they're so loud you have to shout! Peering through binoculars, you look closely at the cliffs. Those tiny colored dots are rock climbers who use rubbery shoes to climb the faces and camp a thousand feet up hanging from a tent secured to the rock. On the valley floor, mule deer graze, squirrels forage for acorns, and skunks scurry about the underbrush. If one does a headstand, you know he's ready to spray. When you crawl into your own tent at night, make sure you don't leave food or trash out. Black bears are common and love to steal snacks. Yasmite is located in California. It was founded in 1890 and its size is 748,436 acres. Some plants and animals that we have living here is the Yasmite Cave Pseudoscorpion. Scientists only discovered this tiny scorpion-like insect in 2010. It is blind, the size of a fingernail, and only known to live in two caves. Fishers, our furry predators, are a little bigger than house cats, but much more ferocious. They are one of the few species that can kill a porcupine without looking like a pincushion. Mule deer are named after mules because of their enormous ears, which rotate towards you when you catch their attention. Acorn woodpeckers drill as many as 50,000 holes into a single tree, then store ac acorns inside of them for winter. Bobcats live all over, from deserts to the Everglades, but they're rarely seen because of their secretive nature. Identify one by its tufted ears and short, black-tipped tails. If anybody went to Elmont, that's y'all's mascot. In poor conditions, incense cedars sometimes grow as little as three feet in three decades. Good thing they can live for 500 years. The Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frog is an endangered amphibian and uses its long sticky tongue to catch insects and slurp them up. They also occasionally eat tadpoles, dead frogs, and even their own eggs. 
The scarlet monkey flower is a, has brilliant red blooms of the monkey flower that attract hummingbirds, which carry pollen to other flowers and help them reproduce. Female black widows have shiny bodies with the telltale red hourglass on their bellies. They are highly venomous, but only strike when they're provoked. As the snow melts in spring, Yasmite comes alive with the sounds of rushing water. Yasmite Falls is the largest waterfall in the park and fifth biggest in the world, tumbling 2,425 feet. In winter, the waterfalls slow down, but on cold mornings, their spray creates sparkling white frames of frost. At night, look for rare moonbows, rainbows formed by light of the full moon that appear in the waterfall's mist. Yasmite has more than 3,000 meadows that attract crowds of wildlife. In summer, milkweed blooms and monarchs brighten the grass with their orange and black wings. Deer graze, dragonflies zoom about, and red-winged blackbirds fill the air with song. If you're lucky and have keen eyes, you might even spot a bobcat stalking the grass for small prey. Meadows are important places for us too. Yosemite's meadows filter water that supplies most of San Francisco. Zip up your raincoat. You're in a deep, dark, silent rainforest that smells of cedar. More than 12 feet of rain drench this forest each year, which is why the ground feels like a sponge under your feet. Bright orange mushrooms polka dot the ground and ferns and mosses carpet every surface. This national park has two other wildly different landscapes. On the coast, wade into a tide pool to see what you can find. Anemones, mussels, sea stars, and crabs. One visitor found a fossilized sea star between 5 and 24 million years old. Within, seven, within miles of shore, the mountains rise more than 7,000 feet. Walk through meadows with wildflowers taller than you as marmots and chipmunks dart into holes. So much snow falls here that you can still go sledding in July. So Olympic is in the state of Washington. It was founded in 1938 and its size is 922,691 acres. Let's look at the plants and animals we've got here. The first is the fiddlehead fern. Look closely at the forest floor for the tiny spirals of baby ferns. Known as fiddleheads, they are a delicious springtime delicacy. Listen for sharp whistles as you hike in a high mountain meadow. That's the sound of an Olympic marmot, a playful, roly-poly, cat-sized rodent. Watch your step. Bright yellow banana slugs cross trails of, on tracks of their own slime. These mollusks are hermaphrodites. Each one is both male and female, but slugs rarely mate with themselves. The Sitka spruce is an evergreen tree and likes the cool, humid weather of the Pacific Northwest coast. Its wood has been used for everything from musical instruments to World War II airplanes. Each pod of orcas speaks its own language of screams, whistles, and clicks. The, these dialects are passed down through the generations. The Pacific Harbor seal has a hardy layer of blubber, and this marine mammal stays warm in frigid waters all year round. Spot seals frolicking near shore are sunning themselves on rocks. Sooty grus, during mating season, the male ones strut with their tails, fans, and neck feathers out to impress the ladies. Cow parsnip can grow up to eight feet tall and bloom in huge rounds of tiny white flowers. Every year, five species of salmon travel up the rivers and streams of Olympic National Park to spawn. Some species can grow up to 100 pounds. The Olympic Mountain Milk Vitch. This plant has soft, furry leaves and is endemic to Olympic National Park, which means it grows nowhere else in the world. About 20 to 40 million years ago, this coast looked completely different. Dark cliffs stretched miles out to sea. Over millions of years, the ocean battered these cliffs and wore them down, leaving only the hardest, sturdiest rock. 
Now about 450 of these monoliths, also known as sea stacks, loom over the beaches and shallows of Olympic National Park. Look closely and you'll spot birds like tufted puffins and bald eagles perched high on these stone statues. When rocks or soil come loose and tumble down slopes, they're called rock slides or mudslides. When snow comes loose, it's an avalanche. Avalanches typically happen on steep, open slopes after a storm when the new snow hasn't bonded to the old snow. Within about five seconds of letting loose, an avalanche can reach 80 miles per hour, sound as loud as a jet, and emit a huge cloud of snow. You're paddling a kayak off Santa Cruz Island when a seal pokes her head out of the water just off your bow and eyes you playfully. Beneath your boat, kelp forests sway and bright orange garbadal damselfish dart right below the surface. These waters are chock full of creatures and so are these craggy isles. The Channel Islands are only 10 to 60 miles from Los Angeles. But since they have never been connected to the mainland, they harbor almost 150 species of plants and animals that live nowhere else in the world. Hike through the hills to spot a blue island scrub jay or a small island fox, one of the most rarest foxes on earth, slinking through the grass. So the Channel Islands are located in California. They were founded in 1980 and their size is 249,576 acres. Giant kelp sprouts in waters up to 100 feet deep and grows as fast as two feet per day. These underwater forests shelter more than a thousand different species of animals and plants. The sunflower star grows up to 24 arms and comes in zany colors, pink, purple, yellow, orange, green, and brown. Its bones are disconnected, so it can open its mouth really wide and swallow animals whole. Native Americans used to collect the acorns of island oak. They boiled the tannin out of them, smashed it up, and ate it. The island scrub jay is a relative of the raven and it's brilliant blue and only lives on Santa Cruz Island, which means it has the smallest range of any bird on the continent. Giant black sea bass. At the bottom of the kelp forest, giant sea bass grow way bigger than we do, up to seven feet long and 800 pounds. Giant corpuses. This unusual plant grows up to six feet tall and sprouts dozens of beautiful yellow daisy-like flowers from its giant woody stalks. The second largest seals in the world, elephant seals, can dive deeper than 5,000 feet and hold their breath for an hour and a half. How long can you hold your breath? I bet you it's not an hour and a half. The great white shark. Weighing as much as 7,300 pounds, this shark is one of the ocean's most feared meat eaters, but they rarely attack humans. The island fox, which only lives here, was almost extinct in the 1990s. Thanks to scientists who bred foxes in captivity and vaccinated wild ones, there are now more than 3,000 in the park, the fastest recovery of an endangered species. The fossilized pygmy mammoth. In 1994, on Santa Rosa Island, paleontologists unearthed a rare find, the most complete fossilized pygmy mammoth in the world. Compared to mammoths, which grew about 14 feet tall, pygmy mammoths were shrimps, just four and a half to seven feet tall. But their small size allowed them to get by with less food, which helped them survive on these islands. President Obama's legion. The Northern Channel Islands host about 400 legion species, the most diverse collection in the whole state. In late 2007, a researcher found a new species of legion and named it after the newly elected president to honor him for his support of scientific research.
Look up! You're standing in a grove of giant sequoias, the biggest trees in the world. The very largest, the General Sherman tree, is taller than a 27-story building and wider than a three-lane highway. This behemoth plant is home to tons of other living beings. Little brown bats roost in sequoias foliage and under loose bark. The northern flying squirrel glides between branches on thin wings and worms, snails, scorpions, spiders, and flowers all live and grow in the tree. Next door, Sequoia Sister Park, Kings Canyon, is also known for really big things. Large black bears roam the forest. Mount Whitney, the tallest peak in the continental United States, rises to 14,494 feet, and Kings Canyon plummets more than a mile and a half into the earth. So Sequoia and Kings Canyon are both located in California. Um, Sequoia was founded in 1890, while Kings Canyon was founded in 1940, and the size is 865,964 total acres when you put the two parks together. So some plants and animals that live in both of these parks include poison oak. Watch out for this common poison ivy relative, which has groups of three lobed leaves. The oil in this plant causes a very itchy rash. Towns beds big-eared bat. In winter, these funny-looking bats hibernate in caves, sometimes in groups of more than a thousand. Moss are their favorite food. The leopard lily. Native Americans dig up leopard lily bulbs to eat. Find this striking flower near streams and in low, soggy meadows. Only found in California, the southern foxtail pine grows very slowly on high, harsh, cold mountaintops. Its thick bark protects it from forest fires. The California quail can be found in brushy areas at low elevations. Offspring leave the nest the day after hatching and can already find their own food. The Sierra Nevada bighorn sheep. They are expert climbers leaping from rock to rock without falling. They give birth way above the tree line, around 12 or 13,000 feet to avoid predators. The California King Snake. Visitors commonly spot this snake at low elevations. Look for a dark brown or black body with white stripes. Monarchs are the only known butterflies to migrate two ways like birds. Some fly more than 3,000 miles to reach warmer weather. The giant sequoia tree. These woody giants have tannin, an acidic substance, in their bark. It's like a superpower protecting them from fires, rot, and insects. As a result, they can live more for more than 3,000 years. The Sacramento suckers are found in the calm pools of streams and have big, fleshy lips. As more land is crowded with human beings, plants and animals need refuges where they can grow without interference. In 1964, the United States became the first country to set aside wilderness areas where nature could thrive untrammeled by people. About 97% of Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks are wilderness, which means there are no roads, buildings, or signs of humans other than trails. In these wild areas, you can walk for days without seeing another person and experience nature in its raw state. Most of the peaks and canyons in these parks are made of granitic stone, which forms when molten rock cools far below the Earth's surface. Now, these rocks form huge gray bowls in the tall peaks of the Sierra Nevada. It's a relatively young mountain range that scientists believe is less than 40 million years old. In fact, the mountains are still growing today. With every earthquake, they gain a little height. All right, everyone, that brings me to the end of part four. Thank you all for hanging in there with me. I know today was a long one, but hey, tomorrow I'll come back for part five and we're going to finish our book.